Welcome to all who have gathered here today on this last Sunday in our church calendar year, a Sunday known as the Reign of Christ Sunday. And next Sunday, we will be starting our first Sunday in Advent. And we pray, as always, that this service will be a blessing unto you. Celebrations, I have no celebrations that I know of, but friends know that certainly as a church, we continually offer prayers to all who may need to sense God's presence. And we know that many of our members of community of faith who are hospitalized, confined to seniors' homes, and have their lives uprooted constantly under doctor's care. And yes, we have those who are grieving. And we lift them unto our God, who knows their every need and draws close in times of need. So we, we offer that prayer to them each Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, announcements. Just one announcement we have to make, uh, and that is on November the 30th, the Trinity U UCW will be holding their afternoon tea, and um, we certainly encourage you to come along for laughter and goodies and lots of fun. Oh, I have another announcement as well. Trinity United Memorial Carol Sing. If you would like to remember a loved one, uh, by having us sing a special carol and place a peace dove on our Christmas tree, please contact Sandra Russell. And the information is here within the order of service. And I think that's all for now. Uh, so let us now join in worship as we join with Yvonne in singing our introit. Are you a shepherd, good shepherd, who leads us safely through danger while calming our fears? Are you a father who shelters and feeds us, shares in our laughter and wipes away tears? Yes, you are shepherd, parent and teacher, but you are greater than all that we know. Holy and living, loving and giving, God you are with us wherever we go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us now join together in our call to worship. Come, Amen. ascribe to the Lord all glory and honor. Announce to the nations, the Lord, the Lord is, is king. king. He, he will judge the people with equity. Him. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exult and everything in them. Let, let everything, everything and everyone, everyone that hath breath praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord and sing. sing for joy. Let us pray together our opening prayer. Great, Great loving God, God who guides us, us as we gather as your people to praise you, to hear your word and to pray that your truth might rule in our every action and thought. Help us put aside the busyness of our lives and focus on you so your love may reign eternally. Help us to follow your path in holy obedience and joy. Be present with us and bless us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us join our hearts together as we sing our opening hymn, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Alleluia. <laughs> Shall be 
shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Friends, we just sang, as we seek the kingdom of God, these things shall be added unto us. And it is in that spirit that we always pray our prayer of confession, knowing that we have a God who loves us and understands our human frailties. So let us pray together our prayer. Holy, Holy God, God, we, we dare, dare to call you, you Lord, Lord and King, yet yield to you only fragments of our lives. You had nowhere to lay your head while we have surrounded ourselves with comfort. We often serve you with what remains after we have indulged our own desires. Forgive our selfish nature and lack of trust. Let's take a moment in silent personal prayer. And continuing together, in your abundant mercy, teach us what it means to truly follow you with our whole lives. Amen. And there's always, always forgiveness declared. Because beloved children of God, the mercy of Christ is from everlasting to everlasting. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks to God, we may live as a people set free. Amen. Yes, I know we have lots of things to be thankful for. Oh, hi, boys and girls. Teddy and I were just sitting here rocking back and forth in the rocking chair and talking about all the good things and the blessings that we have been given. Yeah. You wanted what? Blessings of what? Okay, he got a comfortable, warm home. What else? And he got friends. What else have you got? Okay, he said he got a nice, warm fur coat. Haven't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you? Keeps you warm, yes. All the things, he said. I'll tell them, yes, he said, all the things that God has provided for him. And you know what? He says that he is so thankful. No, Teddy. He wants me to sing a song. What? What song? Okay. You want to sing it with me? No, no, okay. No? All right, then. I'll sing, I'll sing one verse. Okay. The song is, I'm thankful for God's blessing. I am thankful for God's blessings and God's love. I am thankful for God's blessings and God's love. I am thankful for God's blessings. I'm thankful for God's blessings. Yes, I'm thankful for God's blessings and God's love. Yay! Yes. We all need to be thankful. Thankful for all the blessings given us mommies and daddies and friends and loves and a comfortable place to live. And we should thank God for that. Okay, he wants us to have a prayer. Let us pray. Okay, let us pray. 
Put your hands together and bow your head, okay? Loving God, thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us. Thank you for your love. In Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, Teddy says bye. Bye-bye. And before we ask our scriptures to be read today, let us seek God's blessing upon our hearing. Gracious God, as we gather on this reign of Christ Sunday, we ask you, O oh God, to open our minds and speak to our hearts so that the words that we hear from our sacred scriptures today may indeed rule our lives and rule our hearts. Bless our hearing and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, reading verses 4 to 8. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him and even those who pierced him and all the tribes and all the earth will wail on account of him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of God for us today. Thanks be to God. Our response of reading today is found in Voices United, 854, Psalm 132, reading responsively. O God, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to you, a promise to the Mighty One of Jacob. I will not enter my house, nor will I climb into my bed, I will not give sleep to my eyes, not even let my eyelids droop, until I find a place for God, a dwelling for the Mighty One of Jacob. Arise, O God, make this place wherein your name shall dwell. At Ephrata, we heard God's ark was there. We found it in the region of Jar. Let us approach the place where the Most High rests. Let us kneel in worship at God's footstool. Arise, O God, and enter your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people shout for joy. Arise, O God, make this the place wherein your name shall dwell. For your servant David's sake, do not reject your anointed. You made a sure promise to David, a promise that will never be revoked. One of your own children will sit upon your throne, and if they in turn keep my covenant, the teaching that I give them, their descendants too shall sit on the throne in succession forever. Arise, O God, make this the place wherein your name shall dwell. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of John, reading chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summons Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, 
My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, as I said at the opening of our worship, this is the last Sunday of the church year, the Sunday that's known as Christ the King Sunday or the reign of Christ. And next Sunday, we begin a brand new year as we prepare for Christmas. And we'll light candles each Sunday and sing carols to get ready for the coming of Jesus, the Jesus whom we call the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But before we enter into our devotion today, let us ask God's blessing. Loving God, we come as people thankful for how you have guided us with your word this past year. But we ask you once again now to, to be present unto us, to allow your word to become the living word for our lives as we share it today. Bless our hearing, bless me as your messenger. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Today I'd like for you to use your memory for a moment. I hope it is better than mine at times, on some days for sure. And I want you to just recall some scriptural images that we have shared together throughout the past year, the ones that we've shared at our worship. And think of a moment when I say, Jesus Christ, what's the first image that comes to you? Think about it. I'm sure there are many. When I think of Jesus, I know him as the great physician and the healer, as he healed the blind man and helped the cripple to walk and healed the lepers. But I also know Jesus as teacher and preacher, one who shared wisdom and the presence of God in his many times that he spoke to his disciples, and especially his Sermon on the Mount but also the image of the Good Shepherd comes to my mind as one who leads us beside still waters in times when life throws challenges and changes our way that become almost unbearable. And then there's one who comforts me like a brother and a friend and journeys alongside to let me know that I'm never alone. And then there's the image of a servant who humbly reaches out to help others in unexpected ways, embracing even those like Zacchaeus of his time, who was despised because of the things he did. And Jesus himself, a servant, who washed the feet of his disciples, work that was only designated for the life of a slave. And I also know Christ as my Redeemer, one who understands my weaknesses and forgives my foolish ways. And I'm rather friend, fond of calling Jesus my brother and my friend as well. And sometimes I know he walks beside me, ahead of me, picks me up when I fall, and always as someone who listens to me when I talk and talks with me and counsels me and someone who is comfortable to be with, at least most of the time. When you think of Jesus, all those images that I have mentioned, I'm sure some of them are also the images of Christ that you have. But many people think primarily of Jesus in terms of our, our, in, of our introit that you just heard. Are you a shepherd? A shepherd who leads us and guides us safely through danger and calms our fears. Yes, well, the Good Shepherd does seek out the lost and the injured sheep and bring them back into the fold. 
And at times, I guess I'm partial to that image as well, especially when I have experienced loss and need to be guided through the many storms that life may bring. But I would hazard to guess that Jesus as king is not one of the first images that would come to most of our minds. And as we just heard in scripture, we are not the only ones pondering Jesus as king. For it was in claiming to be king that Jesus was bought before Pontius Pilate. And he was called into question. And he, Pilate was condemning Jesus. Surely, though, Pilate must have heard or could have seen the Christ that was before him was one who did not want to rule by force or by power. Yet Pontius Pilate had the same question on his mind, wondering, who is this Jesus? And he asked him, are you a king? And even though Jesus clearly tells Pilate that his kingdom is not from this world, and that the kingdom that Pilate claims does not function like the kingdom of Jesus. And even though Pilate appears to somewhat believe Jesus' claim, or perhaps more accurately, realizes that Jesus is no direct threat to his political power, but political reasons causes him to ultimately condemn Jesus to death and they place over his head a record of the charge that was brought against him, King of the Jews. And that was a charge that Jesus could never deny. And today's questions abound in our day around Jesus' kinship and kingdom. And as is the case with many ideas in our sacred scriptures, when we read them, we often tend to put our 21st century North American lenses on our scriptures. And so it's not surprising that many of us have difficulty with the concept of Jesus as king, and difficulty probably understanding the whole idea of the kingdom of God. One theologian offered his opinion around this difficulty, and he says, and I quote, it is easy for us to see any kingdom that has a flag and a border and has a force of arms to protect it. But it is far more difficult to see the realm of God because it has no borders, no flags, and no forces of power. The realm of God is bounded by you, me, and God, and it exists in the way we encounter and live out in community. And I'm sure most of us would concur that even that can be challenging to get our heads around and our hearts understanding about the realm of God. To see the kingdom of God among us, where God is sovereign and the love of Jesus rules forever in our hearts, that's quite a challenge and quite a difficult concept. And despite Sundays like this one in the church here, it's more likely that Jesus as a shepherd, teacher, or friend, ones who sits with children gathered around him, would probably be the preferred image that most would have of Jesus. And when we do declare Jesus as king, and declare that he's the Messiah, the chosen one of God, we need to think about what it is we are confessing. So maybe the problem of Jesus as king is not so much in the images at all, but is in this age, an age where we do not like the idea of someone directing our ways, or maybe someone calling us to obedience. The idea that someone can command us to do something that we may find difficult to do, or maybe choose not to do, or choose to do it when we want to do it, or even someone who has authority over us, that's not often a welcome concept in our day. And we may prefer Jesus as shepherd, brother, or friend, as just someone who journeys alongside of us and brings our minds 
to the love, the grace, and the goodness of God, but someone who kind of journeys alongside of us as an equal. And when we see Christ in this light, we consider Jesus not only first and foremost in our lives, but one among us. And that may speak more powerfully to some today than Jesus as King. But friends, the scripture for us today affirms Jesus as a king, but a king like no other in our time, a king who offers us freedom, not by force, but freedom, and treats us like equals, a king who serves and even washes the feet of his followers, a kingdom and king who is humble and even uses a bowl and a towel to clean the dust off the feet, as I said, of his followers. One who could do the lowliest of acts for the least of these. And we know that he was a king who had no palace, no riches, wealth, no forceful power, none at all. And we know that he was one who simply calls us to, to be people of God, to love one another and care for one another. Whatever image you may have of Christ, we know that the life and the ministry of Christ is not like the kings and the kingdoms of today. It's truly a different kingdom. And as we heard in Revelations, the king that we worship, and that you just heard a few moments ago, is one, and I quote from Revelations, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who is and the one who was and the one who is to come. And when we look at the life of Christ and we see Christ in this light as the beginning and the end, we are stirred to do what is right. We can live without fear in the realm of God's grace. And we can claim the words of Jesus who tells us over and over again in the Gospels that the kingdom of God is not far from us. Indeed, it is at hand. It is over us and within us. And that can't be nothing but good news for us in this world. So let us embrace this king of love whose goodness reigns forever. Friends, blessed be the name of Jesus, he who is our friend, our brother, our shepherd and Lord, but most of all our king, now and forevermore. Amen. Our next hymn is a wonderful old hymn and wonderful one as well to sing on this Reign of Christ Sunday. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your risen Lord alone. Rejoice, give thanks and sing, triumphant evermore. Let us join Yvonne as we sing that together. Rejoice the Lord is King.
Let us now come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we gather before you today in prayer, thankful for your unconditional guidance and calling us to obedience and loyalty. We give you thanks that you, O oh God, are in control of our lives and you have journeyed with us this past year and we, we trust in your promises to continue to be with us. We, your people, are gathered in prayer today to praise you and bless your name because it is your love that is revealed in the life and death of Jesus that rules our lives. It is your power that is seen in his resurrection, and it is your majesty that is made known by his love and compassion. And help us, O oh God, to always keep your, your power and your authority, your love and your majesty in our minds and our hearts, and to never neglect the doing of your will. As your church, O oh God, we come praying that Christ should always be the focus of our worship, of all of our work within our congregations. We ask as well that you show us ways for your love to rule over and within our family lives. For we want others to know that you are the Lord of our lives, the one who is supreme in deciding how we should relate to strangers and to friends. Help us to make this manifest in what we do each and every day, in how we make decisions about our time and our money, in how we employ our hands and how we direct our feet, in how we speak and how we think, in how we rest and in how we work. Our prayer this day is that we may walk in the way that Christ has shown and as your people, we pray that your healing touch would not only rest upon each person gathered here in worship today, but we know that there are also those within our worship, those who we've named, those who are known only unto you, who need to sense your peace and your calming presence for the troubles they are facing in their lives. Allow them, O oh God, to sense your presence deeply and to know that you journey with them. Thank you, O oh God, that you hear these prayers that we offer unto you this day in the name of the one, your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And friends, when we acknowledge God in our life, when we acknowledge that Christ reigns in our life, we can't help but be generous people and offer to those in need and reach out to those who certainly need support. And it's true, the mission and service that we do that best in our United Church of Canada. So I invite you now to take a moment to listen to our mission and service. Followed by that, we will have our offertory music and then share together our prayer over our offering. Today our Minute for Mission is lifting up gifts with vision. I'm sure you've often heard it said, I have everything I need. I can't think of anything I want for Christmas, or no gifts for me this year, people will say. This is something many of us have heard, and maybe something we've found ourselves saying. And while it may be true, despite not wanting or needing anything, we know gifts are going to happen anyway. 
Instead of searching for gifts for someone who was hard to buy for, why not give gifts with vision? It's a way to give gifts from the comfort of your home with no packaging or wrapping needed. And it's full of gifts that would help transform lives throughout Canada and around the world. When you're placing your order, you'll be able to add an e-card, including a delivery date. For each gift, every gift with vision provides support through a mission and service partner offering a unique project. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to make a difference. Thank you. Wow. Friends, we just prayed that we would, that the love of Christ and the compassion of Christ would reign in our hearts. And when that does, we can't help but give back in gratitude and thanksgiving for the many gifts that we have been given. And it's in that spirit that we always celebrate our offering. So please join with me now in our offertory prayer, and it's printed in your order of service. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, you call us into relationship with you and with each other and to satisfy the poor with bread. Through these gifts we bring, make us agents of your covenant love until hunger is no more. May our offering be used to honor your name. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, let us sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6 of Voices United 273. The King of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever.
Before we share our commissioning, and our commissioning is going to be sung again today. But before I do, I want to thank those behind the scenes who have helped made this worship possible. And I've received some feedback this past week saying what indeed a blessing it is for those who can't get out to worship to have this online ministry. And we thank those behind the scenes who make that possible. And also, thank you to you for joining in, and we always pray that you will be blessed. But thank you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gathers us as one. And now let us sing the words of our commissioning, and it's really our call as Christ's people when Christ reigns in our hearts. Friends, let us go forth loving. Love is a gift God gives, and by the love within us, this world will know Christ lives. Let us Join in singing that together. Friends, let us go forth loving. Love is a gift God gives. And by the love within us, And now, may God dwell in your hearts through faith. May, the, may you be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. And may the strength and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And God bless you until we gather once again. <laughs>